Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here with my spoiler-free review for The Murder of Mr. Wickham by Claudia Gray. This video is going up on release day, which is May 3rd, 2022, and I received this copy in exchange for a free and honest review, so thank you so much, I'm so grateful for that. And I also want to mention that I'm going to put all the content warnings for this book in the description box, so please check that out if you would, um, if you are concerned about that, if there's anything you'd like to know about. And as I said, this is going to be a spoiler-free review. So the premise of The Murder of Mr. Wickham, um, you can probably guess some of it from the title, but this involves a bunch of different Austin characters all coming together. Um, they're all there for a house party, so they're all in the same place. So this is kind of a Jane Austen retelling in a Way, although it takes place after the events of her novels. So it involves the same characters, um, but the author doesn't really change the events of the novels, this is just afterwards. Um, and they're all gathered together and Mr. Wickham shows up uninvited, and pretty much everyone in the house has reasons for not liking him and for not trusting him, some of which we know about from um, the novel in which he appears, but some of the connections are ones that Claudia Gray made herself. Um, so a lot of people have reasons for not wanting him to be here, and all of the people at this house party, including Mr. Wickham, who was again not invited, um, all get stuck there for a few days because of the bad weather, and one night Mr. Wickham turns up dead and not just dead but murdered. We follow quite a few different point of views but our two primary ones, like our two main characters, are Jonathan and Juliet, who are two of the children of some of the characters from the novels. I'm not going to get into specifics in case you don't want to know that going in, um, but they're pretty much the only young people in the house and for um, alibi reasons they're pretty much the only people they know definitively did not do this. And so because of this, um, and because people tend to underestimate young people, especially Juliet as she's a young woman, um, they decide that they're pretty perfectly placed to investigate this crime, to um, talk to different people in the house and investigate, find clues, you know, and figure out who killed Mr. Wickham and why. And I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, I have been excited about it since I heard the title and premise, um, and I think as a Jane Austen retelling that's also a murder mystery, I just think this was really well done. One of the things that I value most in like Jane Austen adjacent works is characterization, um, which I think a lot of people do. Not that the characters have to be exactly the same, because um, authors are putting them in different circumstances, you know, they're changing um, details from the novels or or kind of continuing the novels, so it's not like they're going to be identical to what we read in Jane Austen's novels, but I feel like you want to have a sense that they're recognizable as the people they're based on, because otherwise why would you be reading a retelling? Um, and I feel like Claudia Gray did a really great job with that. Like all of the characters that we follow I think felt true to who they are in the novels, um, and then she also of course invents a few characters, and I really really loved both Juliet and Jonathan. Um, I also want to mention that Jonathan is autistic, that word is not used because of course they didn't have that word then, but there were autistic people back then, um, and I think that seems to be handled with a lot of care. I'm not a Known Voices reviewer, but um, it felt like it was handled with like understanding and with uh, nuance. Um, Claudia Gray does talk about the sensitivity readers that she did, that she had read the book, so it seemed like she did put her work in, um, and I just really enjoyed both of them. I really liked them separately, but also together. I loved watching them work on this crime together. Um, I really liked their connection with each other. They don't make a great first impression, um, but after that we see them realize that they misjudged the other person or that they interpreted something wrong, um, and so for the majority of the book they really are working together as a team, and I really enjoyed that. Um, when they had disagreements or misunderstandings, they addressed those, and I really like the way that Juliet was very understanding and supportive um, of like just the way he talks about like the way he sees the world and some of the things he does to keep him present or to um, like get rid of some of his stress and things like that. I do want to mention that this is not, it's not really a romance subplot, um, like, they do clearly have a connection, and I really like the moments we get with them, but if you go in expecting that to be a primary focus of the book, I don't, like, I don't think that's what this is trying to do. I think you'd be disappointed. I do think that sometimes the way other characters, like, talked to Juliet or interacted with her, it felt a little bit like it was getting into, like, not like other girls territory, which as we know I have a lot of issues with more than I think a lot of other readers, um, but for the most part I think it was done in a way that was clearly showing the expectations of women at the time, and the fact that because all these characters are in such an unusual circumstance, like, characters point out several times, like, there's not really a society manners manual for what to do when you're all trapped somewhere and a murder happens. So I think for the most part that came across as pointing out, like, the sometimes, like, ridiculous rules about manners in society, um, and the expectations of women, and the fact that they are, because they are in unusual circumstances, characters are able to get to know each other um, more quickly and more personally than would normally be considered appropriate. And as I was saying, I did really enjoy Juliet as a character, and I also liked the female friendships in this book, like the way that we see um, Juliet 
like start to interact with these other women and start to form friendships or um, get to know each other better. I thought the atmosphere and the restricted setting was done really well because this is kind of an isolated my mystery in that like nobody's allowed to leave the house. Like for a while actually they physically can't because of the weather. Um, but then also once that lifts, like they're not allowed to leave and they know that one of them is the murderer. And I think that tension was done really well. Another fun thing about the characterization is like seeing like seeing what she does with characters that I had different feelings about in the novels. Like I actually think Emma, who's one of the characters in this book, I liked her more than in her own novel. Um, I just think she came off her best here. She was very endearing and I was able to, like I think this book did a good job of showing the good qualities that she already had in the original novel without highlighting so much of her bad ones. And then as far as the plot, I found the mystery of this one really engaging. Kind of like what I was saying for the romance subplot that isn't really a romance subplot. Um, I think if you're like a big mystery thriller person and that's why you pick this book up, that might not be what you get. Like this is structurally definitely a mystery. Like that is the genre I would consider this book to be. Um, but I think its real draw is if you like Jane Austen, you know, like, um, I do think that you don't have to be an expert on her books um, to enjoy this. Um, and I do think the mystery was like in interesting and satisfying for me. But I think a good way to approach this book is like, primarily the mystery functions to um, give like an interesting circumstance for all these characters to be together, to add some tension, um, to add obviously like a, like a plot element to the book. Um, but it's really about seeing these characters and their relationships and seeing them interact with each other. And then you get kind of an interesting mystery subplot on top of that. I feel like that's a better way to approach this than primarily going into this one for the mystery plot. And then also as in terms of the plot or the story, I think Claudia Gray did a really phenomenal job of balancing the retelling aspects with her own writing and her own um, character and story decisions. Like I think this is very grounded in her novels. One of the things I love about this book is that you can just see the love and appreciation and knowledge that she has for Austen's works just like shining through this book, um, which I really love obviously as somebody who loves Jane Austen. Like I think it's very clear that she knows the source material and she loves the source material and I feel like that's what you want in a retelling. Um, and I think she did a great job of like honoring the core of who these characters and stories are um, while also adding some twists, adding some detail or some backstory. Um, I just think that balance was done really well. And I feel like that also comes through in the little details, you know, like a character will refer to something in Pride and Prejudice that's like something that you joke about with other fans of the novel, you know, um, like this character was right all along. Or like little references, you know, people calling back to conversations or lines of dialogue. Like I personally feel like that wasn't overdone. I think um, like I just really enjoyed coming across those. And again, that was something that just communicated how familiar she is with the source material she's working with. And I also really loved the writing of this. She wasn't like copying Jane Austen, but she also wasn't completely ignoring Jane Austen's own style. There were actually several passages or sentences throughout the book where it's like, this feels like something Jane could have written, you know, which I feel like is, is very exciting in a retelling. Um, but again, she wasn't, Claudia Gray wasn't, I think, over relying on Jane Austen's tone. Like, I think this book was really well written and it didn't lean too far in either direction, you know, either being trying so hard to copy Jane Austen that it's distracting and like doesn't work but also I don't think she went um like too different or too modern like I feel like this felt very grounded in the historical setting um and that includes like the the detail like the references to um the time period I do think that some of the setting like some of the historical aspects and the character setup was maybe over explained a little bit at the beginning like especially in terms of the characters you know like reminding us like what happened to these characters before why they are the way they are you know um like making it very clear what their personality is like what kind of character they are i think there was a little more of that at the beginning than we needed but i think that lessened as the book went on and it wasn't distracting by any means and it could have also been the author just making sure that um, readers who pick this book up would have a good grounding in the history, like in the time period um, and in the novels, so that even if you aren't familiar with Jane Austen, I think you could still follow this book and enjoy it. Um, obviously, I think you're going to get the most enjoyment out of it if you are a Jane Austen fan, but I don't think it's a requirement. Another thing about the writing, and this is something I could see maybe people feeling differently about, um, but as I mentioned, we are following quite a few point of view characters, although Jonathan and Juliet are the primary ones. I feel like the multi-POV really worked. Um, I think the author did a really good job of of making those voices distinct um, while also keeping them written in the same style, if that makes sense. Like to me, it wasn't distracting that we did change points of view. Um, I, that might be something other people disagree about, but I really liked it. 
Um, and I also just found this book incredibly engaging and interesting and like I said well written. Like I really flew through this. I wanted to know what was going to happen and I also think the writing flowed really well. So for those reasons I read this book very quickly um, and I did really enjoy it. I personally think the solution to the mystery I found it satisfying. There were maybe some aspects that felt a little quick, but overall I liked the solution. I think the book did a good job of like pulling everything together um, and I just really enjoyed this book. I think this is definitely one of the better Jane Austen adjacent books that I've read. Um, I've been getting a lot more into reading Jane Austen retellings and I think this is one of the best executed ones I've read. I also really appreciated the way that the social issues and social commentary aspects were handled. I think they were incorporated in the story in a way that felt really natural um, and I think Claudia Gray did a pretty good job of acknowledging the perspective of the time period, like some of some people in the time period, um, while also commenting on it, making it clear that not everybody did believe these things or think these things, um, which is accurate. Like that is how it's always been. I just think those things were touched on with a lot of care in this book. Again, they weren't a primary focus, but um, the way this book talks about things like class and gender, um, I think gender is probably one of the more prominent ones, but also homophobia um, and other kinds of social issues. I think those were all done um, really well and they felt very natural done in the story to me. Another thing about this book for me is it was just so much fun. Um, like I, as you have been able to tell, I'm a big fan of Jane Austen, so it was just such a treat to read a book by an author who also loves Jane Austen and who really understands her characters and who is clearly so passionate about this project and what she's doing. Um, like that was just really delightful. It was so much fun. It was so, um, not relaxing. What's the word I'm looking for? It was so satisfying to read a book that is so well written and that is such a, I think, such a an effective testament to um, the power of Jane's characters. As far as like who I would recommend this for or kind of like expectations for the book, I've talked about this throughout the review but I really think that this book works best as a combination of all the things it's doing, um, like the the mystery element and then a hint of a romance subplot. Again, it's very, very understated, but I like that that was there. But primarily this is a book about getting to spend time with Jane Austen's characters um, in different situations. And I think that this book really shines as an example of that. Um, like I said, I think those other aspects are well executed. Um, I liked the mystery. I liked the kind of romantic subplot. Um, but I don't think those are the main focus of the book. I don't think you should go into this book for the romance and nothing else or for the mystery and nothing else, but as a whole I think all of those things work together really well. I would recommend this for obviously for people who like Jane Austen, but maybe even for people who aren't as familiar with her. If you like these these kinds of genre combinations, um, if the setup sounds interesting to you, if you like mystery when it's used as a subplot or like when, when mystery is more about uh, characters and character interactions, I think this would be a great pick. Or I think just if you're a fan of historical books, um, like just any of those reasons, I think you would probably have a very good time with this book. I think there's a lot of people this could work for, honestly, and it's just such a well-written combination of all those things that even if you're not usually into that kind of thing. Like I don't read a lot of mystery thrillers. There's so much other things going for this book um, that I think that you might still enjoy it even if you're not in one of those specific categories of readers. Uh, but I really love this and I gave The Murder of Mr. Wickham 4.5 stars. Okay everybody, so that was my review for The Murder of Mr. Wickham. Please comment down below and let me know if you're going to pick this one up if you think you might enjoy it. Um, I obviously really really did. I had a great time with it and I can't wait to hear what you guys think if you do try it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!